Hello there, my fellow invading berserkers of corn, and welcome back to your weekly dose of the Siege of Vrax. After the assault on Mortuary Ridge last time, today we're gonna find out what is gonna happen next. As a fresh new enemy comes into the fray, unfortunately for the already battered regiments of Craig. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us resume the story, shall we? As the attacking companies of the 468th Regiment were seizing their objectives, so the darkening storm broke, shattering the skies with flashes of lightning and peals of thunder. The dark clouds would deliver a deluge onto the battlefield in a blinding monsoon that quickly transformed the planet's volcanic ash into sticky grey mud. As the short but violent storm eventually lashed down, the Dreadclaw assault pods and the bigger landing craft from the battleship Anarchy's Hard, now in orbit above the planet, rushed down onto Vrax. The launch bays of the Chaos battleship unleashed their terrible cargo, and the gunners turned those weapons upon Vrax below. In the trenches and the dugouts across the Van Meerland wastes, the guardsmen felt the awesome power of the battleship guns. The air crackled and fizzed with the impact of lance batteries, in places scorching the rock to black holes with the intensity of the heat. Macro cannon shells tore great holes on the planet's surface, the splintering crash of each round rending the rocks and leaving a thick layer of cordite and dust. The siege regiments had no response to this kind of firepower raining on them from above. No counter battery fire could suppress this bombardment. Trenches were destroyed in single hits. Heavy artillery guns were flipped away like child toys, left smashed beyond repair. Krieg guardsmen scurried for cover as the tempest landed all around them. Captain Fodor watched the bombardment from his captured half-ruined bunker, his wounded hand stuffed inside his greatcoat. He saw a great yellow streak of flame race across the sky as a huge shell tore through the atmosphere and streaked earthwards. The distant explosion raised a towering mushroom cloud before the reverberating crash of its detonation reached him. All around, fire was falling from the sky. His own trench line at the base of Mortuary Ridge also took a direct hit, and he felt a shockwave buffet the bunker like an earthquake as it rolled over him. More lightning split the skies as the drop pods fell, each one trailing a fiery comet's tail as it burned into the atmosphere, thrusters driving each towards a target. The sky was full of assault pods, plunging through the rainstorm, riding the lightning down onto Vrax. The Chaos forces crashed into the planet, each spot springing open to release a horde of baying, bloodthirsty, blasphemous servants of the Dark Gods. The orbital bombardment ended as the assault forces landed. Most had aimed their attack at the front lines around the inner defense lines. Bands of corn berserkers from the Skull Takers, the World Eaters, and the berserkers of Scalifrax were now roaming the trench lines, attacking any and every enemy they could find. This was not a frontal assault across no man's land, and the Krieg defenses were not prepared for such a sudden attack. They had very little in the way of anti-aircraft defense, and each regiment's main power was at the front. Suddenly, artillery positions were overrun, and important supply trenches were lost to the enemy. The command dugouts were attacked and turned into gore-filled charnel houses by the blazing pistols and chain axes of Korn's psychopathic warriors. Their carefully organized trenches could not help the Creek guardsmen who were finding themselves suddenly beset from all sides. Reports of attacks were now coming from distant sectors, long believed to be beyond the enemy's reach. Back at Fort C-585, Captain Fodor and his men were suddenly attacked by the crimson armored traitors of a Skulltaker's warband. Each one of these was an enraged, unholy killer with an insatiable lust for combat. The Chaos Space Marines were racing from their assault pods, and soon they were clearing the trenches in savage melee combat, piling the bodies of the slain Kriegsmen as they advanced. It was a desperate melee, but the Krieg Guardsmen stood little chance either way. Their opponents no longer had the weak flesh and breakable will of simple men, but Space Marines driven by the power of their insane gods. 
they were nigh on unstoppable, tearing Krieg squads apart in a welter of slaughter. Captain Fodor attempted to rally his men, but many were already falling back across no man's land. He saw the Makaria's heavy tank firing its heavy boulders as the traitor legionnaires climbed up its sides and into the turret. The hatches were torn open and the crew inside were dragged out screaming. One massive champion of corn lifted the tank commander clear from the turret with a single hand. All around him, men were shooting from their battle-scarred bunkers remaining firing slits. Now it was the captain's turn to grimly defend the bunker as the enemy closed in. The first of the traitor marines to leap into the bridge was annihilated by a melta gun blast to the head. Fodor's men died for cover as a grenade detonated inside next, and a ringing blast stunned them. Another grenade exploded and then another, filling the bunker with blinding smoke. Through the smoke, the enemy then charged, axes held high, their spinning blades spraying blood. With his uninjured hand, Fodor drew his sword and lunged at the first enemy. His thrust was parried aside though, the enemy's sweeping chain axe shattering the blade. The traitor battered him aside then, dipping his shoulder and barging into the captain, sending him dazed and sprawling across the floor. The enemy followed their leader in, and soon the bunker was overrun. Dazed, confused, and wounded, Fodor crawled through the gore in search of an exit, but was suddenly plucked from the ground by a mighty grip. Barely conscious, he was lifted away from his feet, and dangling limply, he saw the steaming face grill of a red-armored helmet, a baleful light glowing behind the visor. The helmet was blood-spattered and bore the engravings of many unholy runes. The power-armored grip tightened around his neck, and he began to choke, as the traitor marine's chain axe spluttered into life. One swift blow added the head of the captain to the gathering pile. And so, with the arrival of the Chaos Space Marines, the situation rapidly deteriorated for the Imperial Besiegers. The appearance of the Cornate Berserkers stole the initiative from the Imperial Guard of the 88th Siege Army. The Cornate Warbands were roaming the Imperial trench lines, attacking whatever they encountered the enemy. Ford C-585, so hard fought for by the Kriegans, was attacked by the Skull Takers, who arrived in their drop pods and began clearing the trenches of Imperial Guardsmen in savage close melee. The 468th Regiment was forced to withdraw from Mortuary Ridge. The sudden arrival of the Chaos Marines would force the Imperial Guard to return to their prior position, effectively restoring the Heretic's outer defensive perimeter and guaranteeing that the siege would grind on for a long time afterwards. The arrival of the Chaos Reinforcements radically altered the momentum of the Siege of Rax. What was a slow, static war of attrition had suddenly turned into a more fluid battle, as the deployment of Heretic Astaris provided the Apostate Cardinal with the ability to strike deep behind enemy lines. But even the Traitor Marines' warbands lacked the heavy artillery and armored vehicles required to smash the 88th Siege Army trenches nor were they actually capable of holding the ground they had retaken from the servants of the Emperor. Yet, being pushed away on the defensive incurred a troubling cost for the men of the Imperial Guard on Vrax. Cut away from easy resupply because of the Chaos Forces, the Death Corps units were no longer able to get the regular supply of men and material that was brought from off-world from the Departamento Munitorum. While the stockpiles of the 88th Siege Army were vast indeed, these supplies could no longer be replenished. Because of the Chaos Invaders, the Imperials on Vrax were now taking even higher casualties than the Administratum expected. The sudden Chaos attacks had thrown the Krieg regiments into confusion, and transformed the very nature of war on Vrax. In some places, the front line had been breached and the enemy had capitalized and pushed it back. In others, it had held firm. Over the next couple of weeks, more and more heavy equipment would arrive from orbit, and the Chaos Forces would try to make more permanent gains. The forces of the Apostate Cardinal would now look to join the attack, charging out over No Man's Land to attack the weakened frontline positions and reclaim lost ground. Where once there had been a clear ring of trenches around the fortress of Rax, now the picture was less clear. 
In places, the front line remained in the same position. In others, it was forced to withdraw as the traitor forces captured and held ground that they had lost over a year ago. The problem faced by the Creek commanders now was that after holding the initiative for so long and dictating where and when the attacks would take place, they had now lost that initiative. Now they were fighting a defensive war, trying to hold their captured ground against furious attacks inspired by the arrival of the Chaos Reinforcements. Greater still was the problem of supplies. The loss of the Vrak system, at least in space, left the siege army stranded with its supply line severed. It was a dire situation indeed. How long could the Krieg regiments fight the war with ever-dwindling supplies? Lord Commander Zulke's staff set to work calculating how long this would be, based on the thousands and thousands of reports from the quartermasters they had received. But what decision they will take, and what will happen next, is a story for another time. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the aftermath to the assault on Mortuary Ridge for today. This reminds me of a certain 40k meme along the lines of and then out of nowhere, corn berserkers. What are your thoughts on the arrival of the corn warbands on the surface of Rax? Would you have employed any different tactics to better defend against them? What would you do in the current situation faced by the siege army? Do share your thoughts and military and tactical genius with the rest of us in the comments below. Was the episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. Thank you very much for watching to the end and I wish you all a great and healthy day. The Emperor Protects.